Okay, let's talk about the last of the principles of design, and that's proportion and scale. We talk about them at the same time because they work simultaneously in a work of art, but they have two rather different meanings. Proportion is the relationship of parts to a whole, and scale refers to the size of something in relation to a constant or a norm. So I say like with scale, think about uh, you know that a dollhouse is small because you know what a real dollhouse looks like, right? That's the relationship between a, a normal house, right, and a dollhouse. So you look at it and you go, yeah, that's really small. I mean, it's kind of cute. It's got all the little doors and all the windows and everything, but it's just a smaller version of this. You might think of model, you know, planes and trains and things as smaller versions. You know they're smaller because you know what a real train or plane looks like. Proportion, on the other hand, relationship of parts to the whole. So we often study the human body because, you know, the relationship of the scale of, you know, the arm to the leg to the torso and so forth are relationship of those parts. We could also talk about different objects within a work of art showing proportions and being, you know, varied proportions and so forth. So let's look at some examples of this. This is uh, Driferous by the artist Polycletus. It's from ancient Greece, dated about 440 BC, just kind of the early classical period that we're looking at. And the Greeks were super into perfection and idealism of the human body. So when Polycletus created this, and by the way, this is a Roman copy because the original was made out of bronze, and bronze is pretty precious metal, and you know, they, those got melted down and recast into, you know, Christian, you know, sculptures and other things during the Middle Ages. But he would have originally been holding a spear in his hand, and that's why he's called the spear bearer. And in this work, Polycletus set out to show the perfect man. So he wrote a whole treatise, right, a, a big canon or thesis, whatever you want to call it, and said this these are the ratios and the proportions that would make a perfect human male figure. So he said things like um, the body is seven heads tall, right? If we, if we took this particular measurement from here to here and went down the body six more times, that would be the perfect one. Um, your index finger, right, four times across your body, right, once in your neck. One, two, three here, one, two, three here, one index finger here. There's an index finger here. Right? So he said that it's all relative. It all works together. It's there the proportions in the human body are really perfect. That that is the relationship of parts to the whole. That's proportions when we're talking about proportions. Now, if you want to talk about scale of this thing. Right. This is six feet, 11 inches. It's almost seven feet tall. It's very large uh, work. So those are just that's that kind of gives you an idea for what we're talking about when we're talking about proportion and scale working at the same time, but have different meanings. Here you can see the face and even within the face of Deriferous, the spear bearer, you can see he has he said like Take the length of the eye, and that length from here to the tip of the nose, right, is that length. The width of the eye from here to here would be the tip of the nose to the bottom of the nose. From here to here is also the mouth, right, top lip to the bottom of the lip. We have a perfect triangle within here. From here to here is the same as here to here. So that bridge between your eyes, that particular point is the halfway point from your face to the top of your head to the bottom of your chin. These are uh, the ear, by the way, if you drag it over, it would meet the bottom right at your lips and the top meets at your eyes. You know, stuff like that. Okay, so this all shows you proportions, relationships of the individual elements of the face and how they respond to the entire head. Um, you know when it's wrong, 
when you look at this particular work, this is a, an Egyptian pharaoh called Akhenaten, and he decided somewhere along the lines that um, for some reason he wanted to kind of shake up and change everything. So he, instead of saying there were multiple gods, right, that they had in Egypt, he decided that there would only be one god and he would change art. He would change all the proportions. And there's a lot of theories on why he did this. And of course, upon his death, it immediately went reverted back uh, to what it was. But there was a 17 year uh, period in Egyptian art where it was drastically different, as you can see. And the proportions here are goofy, right? Although that what I just talked about, this length of this eye, if we did that from here to here, it only comes to about, you know, here, it doesn't get to the tip of his nose, right? The, his mouth is way too big for his, you know, skinny little eyes. And it's the proportions are completely off. This length is way, this is way too skinny for this length here. And if I turn it to the side, it's even more pronounced because remember what I just said about the ear to the mouth? Look at it. It's way up here. And I said the top of the ear went to the eye. It's way up here. So when it's off, you really know it. When the proportions are off, they're really off. We spent a lot of time in drawing talking about proportions. Uh, once again, here's a drawing by Picasso. What's wrong with it? Right? The head is too small for the body. The hands are too big for the body. Uh, so those are, those are proportion problems that, that you could see in this particular drawing. It's Igor Stravinsky, by the way, the composer. Uh, we have a situation in this that is kind of interesting because this is the Pieta by Michelangelo. It's one of my favorite works of all times. And this is when the body of Christ has been brought from uh, the cross and, and Mary has a moment with him. They lay him in her lap and she, she holds him. Now, if Mary stands up, Mary is 11 feet tall. If Jesus stands up, Jesus is six feet tall. If that gives you any indication, kind of the scale, this is a large piece. Now, that's odd, right, to have an 11-foot-tall Mary and a 6-foot-tall Jesus. But Michelangelo knew it wouldn't work any other way, that, that you couldn't have, you know, a 6-foot-tall Jesus being held by 5-foot-4 four, four Mary. It, it just wouldn't work. He needed a large figure to cradle the body of Christ and to make it look effortless. So... There is nothing wrong with the proportions on either figure together. The proportions are off. Does that make sense? Because Christ is next to Mary, you go, oh, he's a lot smaller than Mary. But if he was over here, right, there's nothing wrong with their arms. There's nothing wrong with the legs. There's nothing wrong with this or that. It's the relationship between the two of them. Because they are a whole and they work together, we have to talk about them together. Uh, scale is very important in a work of art. Uh, you would care less if these were the little pyramids, right? It's because they're the big pyramids that it's a big deal. And so size is really important when we talk about art. And if you walk into a Gothic cathedral, look how big these people are, right? Compared to all of this. Okay. Absolutely huge. It would be as if you walked into a 12-story building and it was just open. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. And that's not a fluke. They wanted you to feel small. They wanted you to feel humble as you walked into a Gothic cathedral. Klaus Haldenberg loved to do these uh, crazy everyday items and just little objects and make them really big and stand out. And if you've ever been to the Nelson Museum of Art up in Kansas City, they have some of his uh, badminton birdies, or I believe they call them shuttlecocks is the real name for them. And they're kind of tossed out on the grass as if some you know massive giant was out there playing uh, badminton and the birdies are, are just kind of thrown out there. And to give you a sense of the scale of them, right, here you have a figure. So you get that, you, you can see how really large these are. Now, if they were regular size badminton birdies, 
I don't think you would care anything about them at all. But because they're really huge, people love to have their pictures taken. People love to have fun with them and act like, you know, this and have a good time. And they become fun and funny and goofy. And that's I think that's what a lot of times art should be out there. He does. This is another Klaus Oldenburg uh, sculpture that I believe is in New York City. And, it's you know, it's just a really big clothespin. And there's nothing wrong with the proportions necessarily of the clothespin. It's just really big. It's just the scale is huge. And sometimes this can happen in, in the flip, right? This is The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali. And I'm going to be honest, I before I saw it, it's at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And before I saw it, I really thought this painting was, um, you know, a fairly good sized painting. It's so famous. It didn't occur to me that it wasn't. And when I was in the museum, I'm just like I'm walking along and all of a sudden I walked past and I wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I back up. And was that the persistence of memory by Salvador Dali? And I back up. This thing is very small. It's only about five by seven inches. So it can be the flip reverse. You have to kind of th 